Hey everyone, welcome back to Spiritually Speaking Podcast. I want to apologize for not coming out with a podcast last week. I have been sick and I, as you can hear, I am still suffering from a little bit of laryngitis. So bear with me on my voice here, but this week we are going to start going over the chakras and energy healing and how you can make your life better by healing and balancing the seven chakras. Stay tuned, I'll be right back. Welcome to Spiritually Speaking Podcast. My goal is to teach you the elements of spirituality that will show you how to find your passion and purpose in life. I'm your host, Lisa Maria. So join me in another session of Spiritually Speaking. Welcome back. Welcome back to Spiritually Speaking Podcast, where I am going to teach you the elements of spirituality, how to raise your vibrations, let go of the past, and not worry about the future while staying in the present moment. Today, we are going to review what energy is, how it works in the body, and just like an introduction to the chakras if you're not familiar with them. Now, again, I always give you materials and freebies to enhance your experiences with these podcasts. So I recommend that you go to www.spirituallyspeaking.com I'm sorry, I'm giving you this address again. Here I go. (laughs) It's www.spiritualonlinecourses.org. .org. Spiritualonlinecourses.org. And you can get all the freebies that go with all the podcasts of the second season. So go get them. If you want, pause this, go get them if you can at this time. If not, go get grab them later. They're completely free. You can download them and follow along with me. And if you can't right now, you know, grab them later and listen to it again. Because it's really important to see what I'm talking about. It really helps, again, enhance your experience and help your understanding. With that said, Everything is made of energy in the universe, and it's composed of spinning wheels of energy from tree trunks, flowers, planets, and people, and each is made of tiny wheels that are turning inside, and they ride upon the great wheel of earth, spinning in its orbits through space. Everything is connected. We are all connected by energy. And the wheel is the circle of life that flows through all aspects of existence. Now, the inner core of each one of us spin seven wheel-like energy centers called chakras. These are swirling intersections of vital life forces. Again, excuse my voice, please. I'm doing the best I can. (laughs) Each chakra reflects an aspect of consciousness that is essential to our lives. And together, the seven chakras form a profound formula for wholeness that integrates the mind, the body, and the spirit. Now, if you remember back in the first angel art drawing that I showed you guys, there was angels in different shapes at the top. Or spirit guides that each shape was mind body and spirit each one was one of them okay so you might want to refer back to that as well because that is part of this message as a complete system the chakras provide a powerful tool for both personal and planetary growth chakras are organizing centers for the reception assimilation and transmission to life energies our chakras as core centers form a coordinating network of our complicated mind body system from instinctual behavior to consciously planned strategies 
from emotions to artistic creations. The chakras are the master programs that govern our life. As seven vibratory modalities, the chakras form a mythical rainbow bridge, a connecting channel linked to heaven and earth, or mind and body, or spirit and matter, or past and future. And as we spin through our present times, the chakras act as gears, turning the spiral of evolution drawing us onward toward the still untapped infinite potential of our inner consciousness. Now, the body is a vehicle of consciousness, and chakras are the wheels of the life that carry this vehicle through its trials, tribulations, and transformations. To run our vehicle smoothly, we need an owner's manual, as well as a map that tells us how to navigate the territory our vehicle can explore. Now, I want you to think of the next few podcasts as part of the map for the journey that the Angel Art Diaries are taking you on. All of these podcasts between the Angel Art Diaries are tools that you need to let go of the past not worry about the future, and remain in the present moment. Like I said before, stick with me through this. Subscribe to my podcast so you're notified when new ones are are coming out because you will see how it all comes together as we move forward. And I can promise you that you will see how it all comes together. This is a journey, my friends. A journey that we all need to know to navigate through life and reach our highest potential. And of course, you know I always have freebies for you. (laughs) I actually have three freebies for you today that will help you with the understanding of the seven chakras. First, I'm giving you a chakra self-test that will help you recognize which chakras are not balanced or open or closed. And an exercise called Living Your Truth, which will help you become aware of your own energy within your physical body and how to become aware of how the body speaks to you. Then, I have a handout that shows you how the energy travels through the chakras what the chakras affect, and another exercise, which I'm going to do with you in a few minutes before the end of the podcast. So you can experience exactly what a chakra feels like, and you'll feel what the energy feels like. It's really cool stuff, people. Really cool. And three more tools that can help you balance and heal your chakras and raise your vibrations. Again, you can go download these free tools at www.spiritualonlinecourses.org. That's www.spiritualonlinecourses.org. Okay, so let's move on. The word chakra in Sanskrit means wheel or disc and denotes a point of intersection where mind and body meet. Chakras are also called lotuses, symbolizing the unfolding of flower petals, which metaphorically describe the opening of the chakra. The beautiful lotus flowers are sacred to India because they grow from mud. They symbolize a path of development from a primitive being to a fully blossoming consciousness mirroring the base chakra, which is rooted in earth, And it evolves into the thousand-petaled lotus at the crown of the head. Like lotuses, chakras have petals, which vary in number from chakra to chakra. So beginning at the bottom with the first chakra, the petals number 4, 6, 10, 12, 16, 2, and then a thousand petals. Like flowers, chakras can be opened or closed dying or budding. It all depends on the state of consciousness within. 
The chakras are gateways between various dimensions. Centers where activity of one dimension, such as emotion and thought, connects and plays on another dimension, such as our physical bodies. This interaction, in turn, plays on our interactions with others and influences another dimension, which are activities outside this world. Take, for example, the emotional experience of fear, which is related to the first chakra. Fear affects our body in in certain ways. We feel butterflies in our stomach, our breath is short, and our voice and hands may shake. These physical characteristics portray our lack of confidence in dealing with the world and may lead others to treat us in a negative way, which perpetuates our fear. This fear may have its roots in an unresolved childhood experience, but still rules our behavior. To work with the chakras is to heal ourselves of old constricting patterns that are lodged in the body or the mind or habitual behavior. Now the sum total of the chakras forms a vertical column in our bodies called Sushumna. This column is a central integrating channel connecting the chakras and their various dimensions. It can be thought of like a super highway on which these energies travel. Just like a an asphalt highway or channels through which physical items travel from the manufacturer to the consumer, we can say that Sashumna brings psychic energy from the manufacturer as pure consciousness, such as divine mind, God, goddess, the force, the one, nature, etc., to the consumer, which is the mental and physical individual here on earth, which is us. One could view the chakras as being major cities located along the highway, each responsible for producing their own kind of goods. Or, instead of cities, view them as sacred chambers in the temple of the body, where the vital forces of consciousness can pull together on different levels. Traveling through the Sushumna, there's also many back roads, which are other chakra points, such as the Chinese acupuncture meridians and the thousand of other points, which are called nadis, which are subtle energy conduits, which Hindus have found within the subtle body. Nadis can also be thought of as alternate channels, such as telephone networks or gas lines that go through the house. These move certain kinds of energy, all eventually passing through the main vortex of energy. Now, on a physical level, chakras correspond to nerve ganglia, where there is a high degree of nervous activity and also to glands in the endocrine systems. While chakras are interdependent with the nervous and endocrine systems, they are not synonymous with any portion of the physical body, but exist within the subtle body. Yet their effect upon the physical body is strong, as witnessed by anyone undergoing a Kundalini experience. I believe that the chakras generate the shape and behavior of the physical body, much as the mind influences the emotions. For example, an excessive third chakra would exhibit a big, tight belly. A constricted fifth chakra results in tight shoulders or a sore throat. A poor connection through the first chakra may show up in skinny legs or bad knees. (laughs) Maybe I should check out my fifth chakra, huh? Since my throat is like this. (laughs) The alignment of one's spinal vertebrae also correlates to the openness of the chakras. For example, our chest is collapsed due to a spinal curvature or somatic emotional holding. The heart chakra may be impeded. So the shape of our physical body may even be determined by our development from former lives, past lives, and picked up and continued again in this life because we didn't finish what we needed to in the past life or learn what we needed to in that past life. 
in metaphysical terminology, a chakra is a vortex. And if you download the handout, you can see this in figure 1.9 in that handout. Chakras spin in a wheel-like manner, attracting or repelling activity on their particular plane by patterns similar to a whirlpool. Anything the chakras encounter on its particular vibrational level gets drawn into the chakra, processed, and passed out again. Now, instead of fluid, chakras are made of symbolic patterns of our own mental and physical programming. This programming governs the way that we behave. Like programming in a computer, it channels the way energy flows through the system and gives us different kinds of information. So each chakra, which literally means disk, can be thought of as programming on a floppy disk that runs certain elements of our lives from survival programs to sexual programs to the way we think and feel. The content of the chakras is formed largely by repeated patterns from our actions in day-to-day life as we are always the center point of these actions. Repeated movements and habits create fields in the world around us. Programming from our parents and culture, our physical body shape, situations we're born into, and information from from previous lives are also really important factors. These patterns can often be seen by clairvoyance when reviewing or viewing the chakras. Their interpretations give us valuable insight into our behavior. Like an astrological chart, they show us tendencies of the personality, but are not by any means unchangeable. We can always make the choice to change. Knowing our tendencies tell us what to watch out for and what to enhance and what to eliminate. Through involvement with the outside world, Patterns within the chakras tend to perpetuate themselves, hence the idea of karma. Patterns formed through actions, or the laws of cause and effect, which is a whole nother podcast, people. We will do that because I think that is really important to understand what karma is and the laws of cause and effect. Anyway, it's common to become trapped in any one of these patterns, and this is called being stuck in a chakra. We're caught up in a cycle that keeps us at a particular level. This could be a relationship, a job, a habit, but most often, simply a way of thinking. Being stuck can be a function of either overemphasis or underdevelopment of a chakra. The object of our work is to clean the chakras of the old, non-beneficial patterns, so that the self-perpetuating actions have a positive influence and our life energy can continue to expand onto higher planes of consciousness. Chakras are associated with seven basic levels of consciousness. As we experience the opening of a chakra, we also experience a deeper understanding of the state of consciousness associated with that level. These states can be summarized with the following keywords, although it must be remembered that these words are a vague explanation versus the complexity of each level. The podcasts that follow, the ones that I'm going to do on each individual chakra, will go into a very deep explanation of each individual chakra and their associated elements. But for this podcast, let's briefly go over the seven chakras to give you a brief introduction to them. And don't forget to go get your freebies at spiritualonlinecourses.org. Again, that will help your understanding of the chakras. Chakra one 
is the root chakra. It's located at the base of the spine and is associated with survival. Its element is earth. Chakra two is the sacral chakra. It's located in the lower abdomen and it is associated with emotions and sexuality. Its element is water. Chakra three is the solar plexus chakra. It's located in the solar plexus, which is uh, between probably two or three finger lengths below the breastbone. And it is associated with personal power, will, and self-esteem. Its element is fire. Chakra four is the heart chakra, located over the sternum and is associated with love. Pure divine love. Its element is air. I love love. (laughs) Chakra five is the throat chakra. Located in the throat and it is associated with communication and creativity. Its element is sound. Chakra six is the third eye chakra. It's located in the center of the forehead and is associated with clairvoyance, intuition, and imagination. Its element is light. Chakra seven is the crown chakra, located at the top of the head and is associated with knowledge, understanding, and consciousness. Its element is thought. Again, Chakras can be opened or closed, excessive or deficient, or any of the various stages in between. These states may be basic aspects of someone's personality throughout most of their life, or something that changes from moment to moment in response to a situation or a person. An ailing chakra may be unable to change its state easily, being stuck in either an open or closed state. The chakra then needs healing by uncovering and removing what is blocking it. If a chakra is blocked in a closed state, then it is unable to generate or receive energy on that particular plane, such as love energy or communication. Now, I gave you guys a guided meditation in one of the past podcasts, and you can get that at spiritualonlinecourses.org forward slash free dash resources. That is the freebie page. So it's www.spiritualonlinecourses.org forward slash free dash resources. That is where you can get all of the freebies. I'm sorry, I forgot to give you the forward slash in the past couple times I told you that, the uh, website. But that is the uh, website and the meditation is under one of the last podcasts, one of the, within the last four of them, there's a meditation that is helping you find the root cause of the situation. You can also find that on my YouTube channel, which is Finding the Root of the Problem, Letting Go of the Past, uh, online guided meditations, and they are absolutely free. And you can go to my YouTube channel at www.bit.ly forward slash self-help videos, all one word. So it's bit.ly forward slash self-help videos. I will put all the links in the show notes for you guys as well. Again, if a chakra is blocked in a closed state, it's unable to generate or receive energy on that particular plane. Again, such as love, energy, or communication. We have to uncover and remove what is blocking it. We have to find the root issue of that particular chakra. Now, my goal with all of the elements of spirituality is to help you release those blocks, to release the past, because once all of those past experiences, whether it's this life or past life, once you release what I call schmegma, 
okay? Because I call it just schmegma because that's what it is. It's just layer and layer and layers of schmegma, <laughs> which is laid upon our divine self. It needs to be removed. It needs to be taken away, thrown away, and given to God or your God or your goddess, the divine, the one, whoever you call your God. If it is, now, if it's blocked in a closed state, it's unable to generate or receive. Now, if it's a blocked in an open or excessive state, that means it tends to channel all energies through that particular plane, such as using all of the situations to further one's power or using everything you can to meet your sexual needs when other forms of behavior might be a lot more appropriate. A closed chakra is a chronic avoidance of certain energies when an excessively open chakra is a chronic fixation. That pretty much sums that part up. A closed chakra is a chronic avoidance of certain energies, while an excessively open chakra is a chronic fixation. That is something that's really important to remember. I'll give you another example. Someone with a tightly closed third chakra, which is personal power, would be terrified of confrontation while another who is more open may thrive on it. Someone with an open second chakra, which is sexuality, may juggle many sexual partners, while someone who has a closed second chakra may avoid even feeling sexual. Someone with an excessive throat chakra may talk too much and not really listen while another may be scarcely able to get their words out or feel like their voice is being heard. Now, in the upcoming Chakra podcast, I'm going to be giving you free exercises on how to deal with both open or closed, stuck or not stuck. These exercises that I give you for each individual Chakra will help you balance and heal from them. But for now, let's do the little exercise that I told you about earlier so you can actually feel the energy within your hand chakras. I'd like you to close your eyes and take a deep breath. through your nose and out through your mouth. I'd like you to extend both arms out in front of you, parallel to the floors with the elbows straight. Turn one hand up and one hand down. Now quickly open and close your hands a dozen or so times. Once you're done that, reverse your palms and repeat. This opens the hand chakras. To feel their energy, open your hands and slowly bring your palms together, starting at about two feet apart. When your hands are about four inches apart, you should be able to feel a subtle ball of energy, like a magnetic field floating between your palms. And if you tune in closely, you may even be able to feel it spinning. It might feel like static. It might feel like some a little bit of pressure put against one of your palms, even possibly your fingers. And after a few moments, the sensation will subside, but it can be repeated by opening and closing your palms again.
pretty cool, right? Did you feel the energy? I would love to hear what everyone felt in the comments. So please comment and let me know if you felt anything in your hands. It, again, it could feel like static energy. It could feel like if you put your hands against a TV screen that is on and you feel that vibration or that static feeling energy. It could feel like that. It could feel like somebody's gently running their finger against your palm so gently that it's just like a slight pressure. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. And don't forget to get your freebies. Again, it's so important to your learning experience. Take your chakra test and do the exercises that I've given you. Being able to see what I'm speaking about helps you to understand the chakras better so you can heal and rise up to your highest potential. So download all your freebies again at www.spiritualonlinecourses.org forward slash free dash resources. I hope you enjoyed today's podcast. Don't forget to comment, subscribe, so you're notified when my next podcast comes out because we have a chakra series going on, my friends. Share it with your friends so you can help others rise to their highest potential. I'll talk to you in the next podcast. Namaste. I always referred to my life as a cross between Jerry Springer and Oprah Winfrey. Now... I refer to my life as the Creator's divine plan to enhance the life of others. I was always the bruise on the apple of my parents' eyes, getting in trouble running away, drinking and using drugs from a young adult up to the time I got pregnant with my son at 17 years old. After my son was born, I went right back to my old ways, almost losing my son in the crossfire. And that's just the beginning of my story. Maybe you have some struggles that you're going through or maybe something from the past that you want to let go. Well, I have the perfect way that you can help yourself change your life for the better. I have online courses that range from spirituality to metaphysical to holistic online courses that can help you learn all the elements of spirituality and change your life for the better you can visit www.counciloflight.net. That's www.counciloflight.net. Start changing your life now.